My name is Kim Audley, and I'm Vice President of Public Policy for the Southwest Indiana Chamber of Commerce. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Representative Gail Rekin, who's a candidate seeking election for the Office of State Representative for the Indiana General Assembly. Please note that the same set of questions will be used for both candidates running for this office. Welcome, Gail. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's get started. Okay. Please state your name, office you're seeking, and your current position or employment. I'm Gail Rekin. Um, I am State Representative, District 77, and I am seeking that office for re-election. Um, that is my only employment. If elected, what would be your top three priorities, and how would you seek to fund and implement those priorities while serving in the state legislature? I think the top three priorities, the top one uh, would, be, would be jobs and economy, because I was really concerned that last year um, we really didn't focus on that. We should have, uh, and we need we need to really make that uh, the singular most important thing that we do this year. And that would be funding for incentives. That would be funding for job training. That would be uh, funding for what I would hope would be a more cohesive system throughout uh, throughout the state. Uh, I-69 is the next, and it's it's finishing what we've started now. It's the bridges. It's planning for all that. And again, working in uh, workforce development at that same time to make sure that our folks are ready for the jobs that are coming. Um, the other is education, because I think I'm really continue to be very, very concerned about what's happening to education funding. Um, vouchers are doubling this year, as we understand. And vouchers, unlike in other states, were taken straight off the top. The money was taken straight off the top of our regular education funding and we need to find ways to put funding back into education not into what is a great concern which is the the capital folks are always concerned about capital and that's not our our priority and that's not our bailiwick our bailiwick is funding for the schools and their operation and uh, we we really need to do that do you support the kernan shepherd initiative please explain your answer you know, I was trying to figure out when I was looking at this again how old Kern and Shepherd is, um, how old that, uh, and, and I can't remember because it's been around. And let me say basically about it: there are good concepts and good ideas. My singular comment would be is that anything that is proposed by the majority party needs to be decided at the local level, and that is because we are not like Indianapolis, uh, we are not like South Bend or Fort Wayne. Uh, or, or any of the other major cities. We have, um, we are a different community. Um, and, and we don't seem to have uh, problems with uh, all the problems that I, I hear about in Indianapolis uh, regarding township trustees, which is, is one of the issues. They, their retention of money, uh, lots and lots of money seems to be a real issue. Um, I think there can be some changes in the system, but we need to do it on a local level. During the next session of General, Gen, sorry, during the next session of the General Assembly, legislators will be tasked with writing a new budget. What priorities would you advocate in this process? If a budget increase is needed, what taxes would you increase, or what budget cuts would you propose? I think I mentioned the priorities, which are jobs. That's the funding as well as jobs and the the um, um, I-69 and of course the economy. <clears throat> excuse me, and education. Um, the tax increases, I've heard several, a couple of proposals from our, our leadership, the governors. I think we'll have to wait to see when, you know, what they want to do when they come in. I want to make sure that just um, off the top, we, you know, we understand I am not interested in making it more difficult for the average worker um, to, to buy groceries, to have a good life, to send their kids to school and, and, um, uh, and, and to college. So I'm, I'm not supportive of taxes that are going to be raised on, on folks that are um, having a hard enough time now. Uh, I do think that we can close loopholes in some of the corporate uh, tax structure um, and, and that's something that we need to look at. What do you consider to be the top transportation and infrastructure priorities for Southwest Indiana? And what plans do you have for funding them? Um, I think I-69. Um, I think we're all trying to decide what the heck we're going to do about funding the, rem the remaining <coughs> portion, and we're going to probably have to make some sacrifices. Um, I think as far as the bridges are concerned, 
uh, funding is probably going to be something that um, there's probably going to be a public-private um, to really consider. Um, and I've heard I've heard different legislators talk about tolling. Um, I've talked with folks, a few folks, about it. Um, there doesn't seem to be a real aversion to a toll bridge at this point from people that I've talked to. Basically, because folks that I've talked to say, "Well, I'm going to go here north. I'm not, you know, going south. That's that's not particularly my interest." So, uh, I think we just need to continue the discussion on that and keep our options open. The next question goes along with that. What would you do to encourage the construction of the I-69 bridge over the Ohio River, but specifically between Evansville and Henderson? Well, I think that, yes, I have, but also I think there is a workforce development issue with that. And it's not so much encourage the structure, but it's being, it's being able to maximize that effort here in the state of Indiana so that, our, so that Hoosiers are employed, and I have nothing against Kentuckians, but I want Hoosiers employed, so that we build a workforce that's ready. And that's the pipe fitters, the welders, that's all the people that are going to get those jobs now. And then, then the business that should be starting up around that entire effort um, and that's why I say that we need to really coordinate what's going on. Government obviously doesn't create jobs, but does create conditions that make additional jobs more or less likely. What conditions or economic development tools would you like to see improved upon or added in order to stimulate economic growth, create jobs, and retain current employers in Southwest Indiana? Uh, it's workforce development again. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like to see is an effort uh, coordinated effort along the Ohio. Um, a couple of years, or was it about a year ago or so, I started an initiative called the Ohio River Caucus, and it's a legislative caucus. And what it what it uh, was to do, and 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 it's it, it's still in the infancy stage, is to to encourage discussion among folks all the way up and down the, the Ohio River, so that we maximize what we need in this area, and other folks do in their area, and we have a coordinated effort. It's not only about infrastructure improvement on the Ohio River itself, but also on the banks. And I think that workforce development is very much a, a part of that. Uh, the needs that we have logistics and that training, uh, not only the technology, but you know the the, uh, the the spade and shovel kinds of issues. Um, we really need to make sure that our folks are trained up and down, that they feel there is a, a job there for them once they're trained. And I think we do that. Um, through coordinating all those efforts. Substance abuse, particularly methamphetamine abuse, is a costly community problem in terms of law enforcement, crime, incarceration, fire hazard, environmental concerns, child care, health care, and other expenditures. What changes in the approach to this problem would you suggest and how would you fund any new strategies? Well, we've been working on it and uh, I the strategy to this point, there were two strategies. One was to make pseudoephedrine a scheduled uh, drug throughout the state. And in, when I had interviewed the legislators from Oregon and also from Kentucky who were successful in getting uh, legislation, they reminded me that <clears throat> that was going to be very, very difficult because the pharmaceutical companies get involved. And um, she said the reason they were, in particular, Oregon said they were successful because it was the first one, and pharmaceuticals didn't realize how much it was going to impact. Um, we need to change, I think, because in Indianapolis and Fort Wayne and South Bend, even though they have these problems, they're concentrating on other issues within drug enforcement. So I think we need to go to a request for local control, which was the other option we had talked about um, in the legislature. And we just really are going to have to press for that. Uh, our, our budgets are being strained um, in law enforcement. Uh, the prosecutor has spoken of that more than once. And we need to get them to understand statewide. So every time that I'm in Indianapolis, I wear this big button around the other legislators and say, why are you wearing that? I said, it's no meth. We need to, we need to have our own um, local control. I know it's not a problem for you all, but it is for us. Finally, what's your long-term vision for Southwest Indiana, and what specific ideas or proposals would you suggest to improve the quality of life in our region? My long-term uh, idea, again, and, and because I long-term means ongoing, and I would like to see us um, to, to initiate and be successful in this Ohio River Legislative Caucus that goes, uh, that, that actually talks to um, 
folks on either side of, of the river up and down the 971 or how many miles it is so that we have a coordinated approach that uh, makes sure that the river is navigable, that's locks and dams, and that we actually are building on, building and coordinating efforts up and down the river. And that will bring us uh, long-term success. Gail, we greatly appreciate your time today. If you have a campaign website or contact information that you'd like to share, please do so now. Uh, my campaign website is gailreken.com. I'm also on Facebook, which is just Gail Reekin. Uh, my um, email to the State House is h77 at iga.in.gov. But my private email, which I give out all the time, is greekin77 at aol.com. Thanks again for your participation. For our viewers, this interview and all the candidate interviews conducted by the Chamber of Commerce of Southwest Indiana will be accessible on the Chamber's web website at www.ccswin.com. Please note that the content of this video interview and all the candidate interviews are only for authorized use by the Chamber of Commerce of Southwest Indiana.